Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining me for another Generations um, webinar uh, for tech different techniques. I'm going to go ahead and show my screen right now and um, make sure everybody can uh, to see my screen. If you're having any problems, go ahead and type it in the questions box uh, if you can't see my screen. Um, I know last time um, unfortunately, I forgot to hit that button. So, uh, again, if you have any problems um, seeing my screen, go ahead and type it in the question box. And just about the question box, if you do have a question, go ahead and type it in there, and I will pause every so often to see what kind of questions that we have, and um, if there's, you know, anything that I can go over uh, while I'm talking about the, the technique we're going to uh, learn today. So looks like everybody is looking good. Um, I am now, and again, we are recording the webinar, so you will have access to it later uh, when we send out the, the email. So today we are going to talk about um, reshaping and also the art fonts uh, that we have within the program. Reshaping and the art fonts may look similar, but they're actually a bit different. And reshaping can be done on, you know, any object. We do use it a lot on um, on lettering, uh, but the art fonts are within the text, uh, the insert text box. So let's go ahead and start with inserting text. On the right hand side of my screen, I do have this capital A. That allows me to activate the insert text. I can also get to that by going up to create on the main menu bar. So I have insert text here and then on the right hand side the capital A. In my insert text box I can now input you know what I would like to write and just a reminder you can use regular fonts with lettering you know regular lettering you can use um, you know different fonts that actually have symbols for the lettering. So I've seen fonts that are kind of cute. They have like different sports. Um, like if you type in, for example, capital A, it turns into a soccer ball. So there's a lot of cute things out there that you can do. And that's the nice thing about reading true type fonts is that you can read these fonts that might be um, symbols, uh, dingbats, wingdings, things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and input text and I am just gonna type in in all caps webinar. If I'd like to change the font property, such as the font type, the size, um, and also the style, I can left click, hold, and drag and highlight the, um, the letters. Once that is highlighted, I can now go to my font list and maybe choose a different font. So you can see that I've got a lot of different fonts that I can choose from. When I do choose a different font and I am highlighted on it, I can use my up and down arrow keys on my keyboard to go through the different fonts. I can also, if I know of a font that I like and I know the name of it, while I am highlighted on the font list, I can start typing in the font. So if I like a font that begins with the letter P, for example, if I start typing that in, it will go to my P's. And then I can, again, go through and um, use my up and down arrow key. I'm just going to go and choose a pretty standard looking font. And um, we'll leave it there. And the size, I'll 25.4. Now I am working in millimeters. That's approximately an inch. I am going to select this use art font. With using the art font, when I check mark it, you can see that I have several different shapes that pop up. And on these shapes, you see little nodes with arrows on them. Those are control points, control points that I can change to alter the shape. So we do have several shapes, and we're going to go over a couple of them. So let's just go over an arrow, an upward arrow. Actually, let's go over the house. With the house, it has two control points. The arrow has one, so we'll go over that one next. Once I choose that, I'll go ahead and press OK. 
Now you can see that art font is chosen. If I made a mistake and I want to choose a different art font, I can always click on the art font and then go back and change it to a different one. But here we're okay. We're just going to hit cancel. Once I do have that selected, you'll notice too that my text path goes away. And that's because my font is now going into a shape and not following a text path per se. So I'll go ahead and press OK. Once I press OK, you can now see that my lettering is in the shape of that house. I have the yellow notes at the, you know, the, the yellow diamonds, and I also have white diamonds. The yellow diamonds are a little bit different than our white diamonds. First of all, our white diamonds, if we place a cursor over the white diamond, our cursor turns into a crosshair. Once it's turned into a crosshair, I can left click once to select it. And green means that it's selected. I can left click, hold, and drag. And really, I can't go to the left anymore because it's all the way to the edge. But I can change the uh, spacing in a sense. Now, usually, I don't change this until I go over to this node on the right hand side. Once it's a crosshair, I will left click, hold, and drag, and I can make that house in a sense wider. So you can see now that I have different spacing, it makes more sense to change the uh, the spacing on uh, with my green node, or I'm sorry, with my white diamonds. Um, so I can you know change things around however I'd like. So this diamond on the right hand side is going to stretch out that house or squeeze it together. So you can see that's just with a left click, hold, and drag. Now the other diamonds, this diamond here at the top, if I left click, hold, and drag to the right or to the left, I can kind of change the roof of that house. And you can see, you know, where I can change that, uh, kind of the, the point. Then over on the left hand side, if I left click, hold and drag, I can drag up and I can drag down. So you see that point stays here, but I can actually make the, oops, I can make the, uh, the sides um, be larger than the point or smaller. So you can see that we can, you know, change, I guess, the roof, if you will. Um, so these control points, you know, you do have certain, um, you know, a certain, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, you can only go up so much and down so much on these. So you do have, uh, you know, these different, oh, I, I've lost my words. I'm sorry. I think you guys know what I mean. Um, <laughs> so you you have these certain points that you can only go until. Um, so after I've done that, I'll generate my stitches, left click off to the side. And now you can see my lettering is in that shape. So again, we do have the art font. And the nice thing about the art font is that if I do left click on this, um, I do have those white diamonds that I can left click, hold and drag and then regenerate. I can also hit the edit button. And when I click the edit button, I can click on the art font again, and I can actually change to a different shape. Let's go ahead and click on that, press OK, and OK again. And now I do have a different shape. But the beauty of it is that if I don't want the art font at all, I can just deselect it and leave it on a straight line or do an arc or whatever I'd like to do. So you can go back and forth to, you know, regular lettering or you can do it in a shape. So let's go to a new design and I will go up to insert text. And here um, everything comes up what we did last time. So I will click here and now we'll just do a different one. We'll do slope left. Press OK and OK again. So you can see we do have two yellow uh, diamonds 
This one will extend or make it smaller. And then this one, if I left click, hold and drag, each one does something a little bit different. You could actually have it become a, a square if you wanted to. Um, you can make it smaller, taller, you know, it just depends on what you want to do. Um, so again, these control points are all going to do something different. So this is kind of fun. It looks like a little bit of a, you know, kind of, you can make it look very whimsy because it is kind of coming up here. I'm going to go to a new design again. This time we're going to use the insert text and I'm going to deselect use art font. When I deselect use art font, it's just going to be a regular text, you know, just on a straight line like I typically do. I'll go ahead and press OK. So you saw with the art font, um, we definitely had, you know, parameters that we had to stay within. But when we use the reshape tool, it's a bit different. You have basically, um, you know, unlimited changes that you can do. But with that, you um, lose some things as well. I'm going to go ahead and generate my stitches. And with that webinar selected, at the bottom left-hand side, I have the reshape tool. You can do this with one object at a time. All of my letters are one object because I have the eight black nodes surrounding them. So I will click on the reshape button. And I do have all these different styles that I can reshape into. With these reshape tools, I also have pull points that I can change. So let's say, let's do this house one like we did before, 118. Press OK. Now when I press OK, you can see that my letters change. Actually, you know what? Let's hold on that. Let me hit Escape. Escape gets me out of the tool and cancels out any um, things that I do. I do like to view this in my outline view because it's easier to see. So I'm going to left click on View Outline, or you can go up to View and then View Outline. So again, with it left click selected, I'll go to the Reshape tool. Left click on Reshape. We're going to go back down to that 118, left click on it, and press OK. Now you can see it kind of goes into that house. Although, instead of having the yellow diamonds to change uh, you know, the different pull points, I can now put my cursor over one of the black nodes. My cursor is a four-way arrow. And I can left click, hold, and drag. And I can drag as tall as I want. I can cross over itself. So you really have um, you know, nothing keeping you from changing things. Uh, if I hold my control key, I can go only left and right. You see how my cursor turns into a little uh, two-way arrow with, um, with a circle? And then if I hold shift, by just shift, I can go up and down. But when I do this, I lose my white... Um, my white diamonds, but I can change any one of these nodes. So you do have a lot more freedom with this reshape in a sense. So it's kind of a fun thing to play with and you can do reshape also with, uh, with anything that you create in the program, anything that you can left click on. So when I hit generate, whoops, you know what I did? That was a perfect example of showing you the wrong thing. You have to hit enter as soon as you're done. So let's go ahead and do this again. And again, left click, hold and drag. And you can see the difference. Um, you know, when I did it with the uh, in the outline view, rather in the stitch view, right now we are in the stitch view. Um, you can see that, you know, I do like to see it in that outline view because it is a little bit um, more clear as far as you know your what you're doing so now hit enter and then generate your stitches so that is what happens when you're using the reshape the bottom left you do again lose those white nodes um, so if we go to insert text here and use the art font 
click on this button and use the house, press OK and OK again, you can see it does look, you know, you, you have more um, limitation here than you do on the other one. You can come up with some really cool things, you know, with both. And that one you do not have to press enter. Um, so you can see there's some, some pretty cool things. So I'm just going to pause for a second. It looks like we do have a question. Okay, so the blue, your default color. Um, that is my default color. In version 2.0, it changed to this lighter blue. Um, so with that, before you start your design work, um, you can change your color. Um, and I believe if you, um, uh, let's see, hold on one second. If you, let's go to a new design. If we change our color here, press OK. That's our, our color. So if I go to another new design, it will stick on that default color until you close out the program, I believe. So let's go ahead and go to insert text, and there's that color. So before you start your digitizing, you can choose that color, um, you know, your, your default color before you start. Now, just as an experiment, I'm gonna go ahead and close down the software and I'm going to restart it. And it looks like it changed back to the, the blue. So um, I'm not exactly sure how to change it um, for every time, but I will certainly look into it and see what we can do. Um, question, when selecting font size, what determines the initial width of the entire word or phrase? So um, the width of the lettering, you can determine it by creating, drawing your own line, but uh, the entire width of the phrase, if you do it on automatic, will do it automatically. Um, and that's going to be based on the size of the lettering. And if, I'm just gonna type in an A here and press okay. And you have this bounding box of your letters. Um, that lettering, um, each letter has a bounding box and it's going to space it appropriately. So if you do, let's say, again, we'll type in webinar and we'll put it on an auto text path and press OK. I'll generate my stitches and it's going to put it on the best fit line. Now, if I go to insert text and type in webinar, but on the text path I choose a line, I can define how long my text should be. Press OK. And now I can left click where I want it to start. If I, um, I come all the way across and left click where I want it to end, it's going to fit it on that line. It's the same height, but it's on a different line. So if I wanted to make sure that that's going to fit on that line, I can always hit edit here, change the size. Let's go ahead and change it to 15, which is in millimeters. It's going to keep it on the current line, press OK, and then generate my stitches. So auto will put it on the best fit line dependent upon the font itself. Line, you can draw your own. Um, So um, yes, the recording, or I'm sorry, the webinar is being recorded. So um, no worries if you came in late or anything like that. Um, in order to tell which uh, version of generations you have, um, you can go up to, let's see, hold on one second, sorry. You can go up to help and then about generations. And in here, it'll show you what version you do have. As far as um, the belt cycle, we will go over the belt cycle, which is um, one of the art fonts. And 
also we are going to uh, I'll show you again how to do the um, the reshape so let's go to a new design and we'll go to insert text and I will leave it as all caps and and the reason I do all caps with a lot of this art font is because it looks really good because all the letters are the same size um, when you have letters of different sizes it will it'll still look you know like it's in a shape but I think it looks sharper when you do it in all caps um, let's go ahead and click on use art font and we will scroll down and we have a belt cycle going to the left and a belt cycle going to the right We'll choose the belt cycle going to the right and press OK. I'll press OK again. And what's going on is that my letters are going to the right. You can see that it's kind of going around. I've got W, E, B, I, N, A, R. Um, and with, you know, that's that's going to the right. So if I click edit and I now go to the left, press OK and OK again, now it's going to the left. So those are the differences between the left and right. Let's get back to the reading order of going to the right, press OK. You have um, some different, you know, you, you do have the yellow diamonds like you do on the other ones and they're going to be a little bit different. This one right here, if I left click hold and drag to the right, it will stretch out my belt or kind of my oval and what it's looking like it's doing it's kind of going around in a, a circle um, and all the letters are facing outward so this these letters kind of look like they are uh, backwards um, you can do different things with uh, with the lettering in the white diamonds to make it all you know kind of look like it's in the correct order um, this white diamond here, or I'm sorry, the yellow diamond here, if I put my cursor over it and turns into a crosshair, I left click and it will um, make that, kind of stretch it, I guess. Or you can go, uh, you can stretch it the other way, you can shrink it together. Now, if you look and I let go, the NAR is gonna be down here. So it looks like it's kind of coming up down and around. I love it. Left click, hold, and drag. This one, this one's kind of cool because you can, oops, I'll left click back on it. You can take this and you can change where that W starts or where the, the beginning of the lettering starts. So if I change it to here, left click, hold, and drag, the W will start over here. So it usually is right here on the edge. And uh, what I was saying, if you want to, you know, have all the letters kind of straight, you can take these letters on the white diamonds and you can move them on this kind of belt. It's kind of an interesting uh, font or, you know, shape, I should say. Um, I haven't played with it much, um, but I can see where there would be some cool things that you could do with it. So I'll bring the R all the way around, and you know what? It looks like we need to make it a little bit wider. So I can take this and make it a little bit wider. I could even have this kind of come back here. And I think you can kind of see, you can get the picture. Um, Let's go ahead and zoom the whole design. Actually zoom out a little bit more. This is quite wide. Right click to deselect and I can click the edit button. And actually if we make this a little bit smaller and press okay, um, you can see that we could probably fit more in that same area. So again, this will, the, the yellow diamonds do, do you know, different things. And it just kind of all depends on what you want to do. Um, looks like I stretched it out a little, little far here, but that's all right. I'm going to left click, left click, hold and drag and just keep going. So this is something, you know, that you could 
play with. And, uh, you know, if you get to playing with it and stitch out something cool, I'd love to see it on our Facebook page. Um, we can share that. And so if I generate my stitches, now you can see it kind of almost looks like that uh, that one that we did earlier where it kind of raises at the right hand side. Um, so, uh, you know, there's lots you can do, lots of fun things you can do. Um, I'm gonna pause again to look at some of the questions. Okay, so one of the questions was, can you change your default color? And I showed you how to change it with the program open, but to change it um, for every time you open it, I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's see, question about exporting how it won't let you export sometimes. Um, Samantha, if you can email me exactly what you're having problems with, um, that would be really helpful. Uh, one thing that I have noticed is that if you're having problems exporting, if the dongle is plugged into a hub versus straight into the program, sometimes that hub doesn't give enough power to the dongle to do export. But you can email me, just uh, email tech support T-E-C-H-S-U-P-P-O-R-T at generationsemb.com. Um, tell me the problem that you're having and exactly how you're doing it, like which export you're using, you know, um, all that good stuff, and I can certainly help you out. Ellen, um, you said, how do I get back to version 2.0? Give me an email, um, send me your dongle number and everything, and I will help you that with that too. Um, so the uh, question, there's a question about how to go over the reshape tool. Um, let's go over that again, and I'll go to a new design. Um, in a new design, we will go to, whoops, sorry, I'm trying to hide my controls over on the right-hand side. So again, we can do this with lettering, we can do this with any, uh, you know, shape we have. Um, here we'll do lettering. I will deselect use art font, press OK, and generate my stitches. I do, again, like to use this in my outline view. So I'll go up to view and then view outline. And down at the bottom left hand side, I have the reshape tool. I'll left click on reshape. These are the different styles that you can work with. So if we wanted to do you know, style 103, we can choose that, press OK, and now you can see that our letters are reshaped into this. We can place our cursor and over any one of these black nodes and move this wherever we want. To move it, we just left click, hold, and drag, and we can drag it tall, we can drag it to the left, we can drag it to the right, we can, you know, cross over itself. Um, there's quite a few things that you can do. But if you hold your control key and put your cursor over the node and left click, hold and drag, it will drag it only on the horizontal. I'm gonna let go of that control key and now you can see I can move it wherever I want. And I'm, I'm still holding my left click. If I hold the shift key, I can move it just on the vertical. So if I wanted that nice and straight, I can do that let go of my left click, let go of my shift. In order to input these changes, I hit enter on my keyboard and then generate my stitches. Now with the reshape, remember that we lose those white diamonds, whereas the other ones we don't. There was a question, we have one a time to go over one more question. There was a question on how to change corners. Um, corners, you can see that we have a corner here of the E, we have corners of the B, and things like that. We can change these corner types. Here's a capped corner right here on the W. We can change the corner types in our angle view. So I'm gonna press escape to get out of the tool, and I'm going to 
let's go ahead and zoom out so I can see my lettering a little bit better. I'll press escape to get out of the tool. I need to right click on my area. Now remember, with corners, it has to be on a satin stitch. So with me right click selected on this area, I can see that it is a satin. Whenever I input lettering, the default is satin stitches. So we now will go to the view angle tool, or the view angle mode, left click on that, or you can go up to view and then view angle. Here we can see the angle, the angles I should say, of our satin stitching. Here's a corner here and here's a corner here. With it right click selected, it is shaded in gray. And now I can go up to angle on my main menu bar, click on that, and go down to edit corner. When I left click on edit corner, my cursor turns into a crosshair. And with that crosshair, I need to draw a box that encompasses the entire corner along with the angles for that corner. So I'm going to start here at the upper left hand side, left click, hold and drag a box to get everything. When I let go of my left click, you can now see the corner options appear. I can change it to whatever corner I'd like. I'm going to change it to a 90 degree corner and press OK. Once I do so, you can see the angles change. I'll press escape to get out of the tool and now generate my stitches. And now you can see, let's just look at it in the 3D view, I've got a different corner type here than I do here. This is the same corner type I had uh, up here before. So that's just kind of a quick way to show you how to change corners. Uh, corners are going to be different for different letters. Um, maybe for example, on this guy right here, I would like to have um, more of a, I guess more of a mitered corner. So I'm gonna go to my view angle, right click on this piece, go up to angle and edit corner. With edit corner selected, I'm going to left click, hold and drag. And then I will take the mitered corner, press okay, press escape to get out of the tool and then generate my stitches. Um, I can then zoom in and if I don't like the way the stitches are going, I can always go to my view angle at the top here, press escape to get out of the um, zoom tool. And I have two angles, one on this segment and one for this segment. So if I left click on that angle, I do have the ability to take the angle and move it for that uh, segment. So you can see this segment right here, I can make them go uh, kind of parallel to each other and then generate my stitches and I have a different type of corner. Let's see right there, you can see that a lot better. So there is a lot to play with in here and um, with the, the art, fonts and as well as the um, the reshape there's a lot that you can do so I appreciate your time and uh, if you have any feedback please email me you can email tech support t-e-c-h s-u-p-p-o-r-t at generations emb.com uh, we will be sharing this on YouTube as well as uh, as a download on our website and you'll get the links for that. And uh, if you need anything, please let us know, join our Facebook page. We'd love to see you. So thanks again for coming. Um, you can go ahead and exit the webinar and uh, we'll see you next time.